In this video, I'm going to make you an expert in using the selection tool. That's the first tool that's in the timeline toolbox that looks like a pointer and it can be used in an incredible 17 different ways. Being a master of the selection tool will make your life easier and speed up your editing since you can do so many things without bothering to select another tool. For example, you'll be able to edit to the beat of the soundtrack so much faster. Often you can make edits in one step that would otherwise take several steps. So stick with me and we'll cover 17 different uses or modes of operation of the selection tool and you'll become an expert. This is the first video in a series that will cover all of the timeline tools. So subscribe to the video darkroom so as not to miss them as they're uploaded. I've put four clips onto my timeline and I've labelled them with different colours just so that you can easily see how things move around on the timeline and make it a little bit less confusing. All of the tools in the toolbox on the timeline panel have a shortcut that allows you to select them quickly. For example, by typing B, you can select the ripple edit tool. C will take you to the razor tool to cut your clips and Y will take you to the slip tool, P to the pen tool, H to the hand tool, T to the text tool. But the one that we're looking at today is the selection tool and that can be activated by pressing V. The shortcut V will take you straight to the selection tool from wherever you are. The first and most simple thing that you can do with the selection tool is simply to select clips. So click on the clip and it will select it along with any linked components or linked parts that it may have, such as the audio component that goes with it. Just click and it will select that particular clip. Now if it's not selecting the audio component or the other parts that are linked to it, that's probably because you have the linked selection button in the timeline panel unselected. So if, for example, I unselect it here and click on a clip, it only selects that part and not the other parts that may be linked to it. If I press it again, and click on a clip, it selects both of the linked parts. So let's leave it set, because that's the normal behavior. Now, as you can see, I'm using a Windows PC, and so when I'm using some of the modifier keys on Windows, I will hold down Alt, and on Mac, you would hold down Option. And when I hold Control, that would be Command on Mac. So I'm not going to cover the difference every time. I'll just use the Windows keys, but you can convert to the corresponding Mac keys as required. The second way to use the selection tool is to hold down the Alt key. This allows you to select a clip without selecting any linked parts, such as the audio related to it. So you can select just the individual component. And this basically gives the behavior that you would have got if you had left the link selection button unchecked. If you have the link selection button unchecked and you hold down the Alt key, that will reverse the behavior and allow you to select the linked components or the linked parts of that clip as well. So let's leave that button checked. So the third method of using the selection tool is to hold down shift and that allows you when you hold down shift to select additional clips that will be added to the selection and if you click them again then they are taken away from the selection so you can add or take away to a selection by holding down the shift key. The fourth way to use the selection tool is to drag across a number of clips from the blank area. So starting in a blank area, if you drag across a number of clips, they will all be selected together. I'll just unselect those by clicking in a blank area with the selection tool. Now, if I use this method of dragging from a blank area and selecting a number of clips, I can add to that selection by holding down shift and dragging across a number of other clips. And if you want to eliminate a clip from the selection, you can hold down shift, start in a blank area, and end in a blank area and that will deselect any clips that you have dragged across in between. So that has covered six different methods of using the selection tool to select or deselect 
single clips or multiple clips. Let's now move on and look at moving or dragging clips on the timeline. So first of all, if you click on a clip with the selection tool and drag it across your timeline and drop it, it will simply overwrite whatever was there in the first place. So the default mode of using the selection tool is just to overwrite whatever was there in the first place. I'll just type Control Z between these demonstrations just to move back to where we started from. Now if you hold down Control when you're moving a clip, you'll see that a line appears where that clip is going to be inserted. So by holding down control, you've moved to insert mode rather than overwrite mode. So if I drop the clip here, you'll see that it has been inserted in the middle of that second purple colored clip. I'll type control Z to go back to the where we are. You can use this method to drop it in between two clips. And if you have the snap button set in the timeline, then it will snap in between those two clips. So you've moved it in between these two clips and you've left a blank area where it was taken from. Type Control Z to get back to where we were. If you hold down Shift and Control at the same time, you've moved into Ripple Delete mode. And when you drop the clip, it will overwrite what was there previously, but it will ripple delete the area that the clip was taken from. So I'll do that again. Hold down Shift and Control, and if we move it over these, you'll see that it has overwritten the latter half of the purple clip and the first half of the green clip, and it has eliminated the space where it was taken from and moved everything forwards on the timeline. If you hold down Control and Alt at the same time, you're in insert mode with ripple delete. So the effect of this is to reorder the clips. So by dragging this blue clip across to the join between the next two, I will move it into that location and remove the space that it was taken from. So essentially, you're just swapping the order of those clips. So I could put them back the way they were by holding down Control and Alt and moving that first clip back to the place that it was and letting go and everything's back to the way that it was originally. Now that's incredibly useful because that simply allows you to swap the location of clips very easily on your timeline. The 11th method of using the selection key is to hold down shift and move the clip. And in this case, it only allows you to move it vertically. So if you drag the clip up, it will move the video portion of that clip up. If you hold it down, it will move the audio portion of that clip down. So holding shift allows you to move the position of the clips on a vertical direction, basically moving them from one track onto another. And the 12th use of the selection tool is by holding down the Alt key. Now, first of all, just gonna press the minus key just to give us a little bit more space on the timeline. If you drag a clip holding the Alt key down, it duplicates that clip. So you'll see now that I've got two copies of the purple clip. I'll press Control Z just to go back to the way we were. If I pick the green clip and press Alt, I've got two copies of the green clip. Press Control Z again. If you pull down Alt and move it vertically, you've got a duplicate on the timeline above it. So you can move that around just wherever you wish um, to do so. So I'll press the plus key when the timeline panel is selected and that will expand the clips to fill the window of the timeline and allow us to see a little bit in a little bit more detail what we're doing when we start to trim or expand some of the clips. So the 13th use of the selection key is for trimming clips. So if you hover the key over the end, the inside end of the clip and drag it to the left, you'll see that you have shortened that clip if you then subsequently select in the same location and pull it to the right, it will expand the clip up to the point where the next clip is placed. It won't overwrite the next clip. If you wanted to expand it beyond this division, you could of course select the remaining clips, drag them a little bit to the right, and then that would allow you to extend this clip a little bit further. 
but that would depend on whether there is footage that is beyond the start and end of the clip as it is on the timeline. In other words, if it's had its in and out points trimmed. So let's go back to the way it was and we can demonstrate again how to do that trim. So just simply hover inside the clip end, close to the end, and drag it to the left, same position, and drag it back to the right. If you want to do the same for the start of the next clip, you can select the start of it. You'll see the little red bars appear there and you can drag it to the right and you could then extend the other clip to the right. But all of these take more moves than is necessary and I want to show you faster ways of doing that. So let's type Control Z a couple of times and go back to where we were. So the 14th method of using the selection tool is if you hold down Control now, if I hold down control, you'll see that the little bar showing the end of the clip has turned yellow from red to yellow. And if I drag it back now, it will trim that clip, but it will do it with a ripple effect so that the other clips are moved forwards. And if I want to do the opposite in this case, I can pull it to the right and the other clips are moved off to the right to compensate for that movement. So that is trimming the clip with ripple effect. The 15th use of the selection tool is to hold down Alt when you trim the clip. And in this case, it will only trim the element that you're dragging. It won't trim the linked parts of the clip, such as the audio. So that allows you to trim the video part without changing the audio. And you could, for example, take the next clip, hold down Alt, and move it to fill up the gap, in which case you have got a different transition point for the video and the audio, which could be useful in certain situations. I'm just going to press Ctrl Z a couple of times to get back to the way that we were. So the 16th use of the selection tool is found by pressing Ctrl as you hover over the dividing line between two clips and this turns the selection tool into the rolling edit tool. This means that if you drag this to the left it will shorten the clip on the left and lengthen the clip on the right and if you drag it to the right it will lengthen the clip on the left and shorten the clip on the right to compensate. So this allows you to move the division between two clips. That can be incredibly useful for when you want to edit your clips to the beat of a music soundtrack. And the final method of using the selection tool, the 17th and last method, is to hold down Control and Alt as you drag the dividing line between two clips. This does the same as before except that it doesn't move the associated parts of the clip, any linked parts of the clip. So we have moved the dividing line between the video portions of these clips and not moved the audio portion. And that could be useful, for example, if we do it in this direction, then the audio from this clip is introduced before the video and that's often a useful effect that you may want to achieve in your videos. So there are 17 different methods of using the selection tool that will make your editing so much faster. I'll put all of those methods in the description so that you can have a handy reference to them. Now I want to add one word of caution here. If you had, for example, a soundtrack on your timeline, and I'll just put one on here. So we'll add a soundtrack to that. If you're making changes to these clips, if, for example, you're using ripple edit or ripple delete to move some tracks, let's say we want to move this track across a little bit, holding down the control key to do an insert then you'll see that the soundtrack has been interrupted here. So that's clearly not good. So what I would recommend that you do in this case is click on the little lock button that's on the soundtrack. And then if you move something around, the soundtrack will remain unaffected by that particular drag or move. So just press Ctrl Z to get back to where we were. So just lock for the time being the soundtrack while you're making edits and you can subsequently unlock it if you need to make some changes to it. 
I hope that you find that useful. In a video coming up soon, I'm going to cover all of the other tools that are on the timeline panel. So if you want to learn about these, then subscribe to the video darkroom and I'll see you in the next one. So if you've enjoyed this video and benefited from it, then please subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell and you'll be notified of the new videos as they're uploaded. I'm going to post a new video each week covering Premiere Pro, After Effects, Audition, Photoshop and Lightroom. So if you're interested in learning about these projects, then please subscribe to this channel and hit the bell and get a new video every week.